Hello and welcome to my On One Photo Raw 2024 review video. And yes, this is early because this is the beta version I have here. I've been playing with it now for quite a while and in all honesty, it's kind of blown me away. And it's blown me away for a few different reasons, which I'm going to get into in the video. So um, come on, let's check it out and I'll, I'll walk you through it and talk you through it. Okay, so Kieran, you mentioned there's quite a few differences in this software. So what exactly are the differences between Photo Raw 2023 and Photo Raw 2024? Well, in all honesty, there are actually too many to mention. The first thing you're going to notice in On One Photo Raw 2024 is when you're browsing from folder to folder, the images pop up instantaneously. Photo Raw 2023, it took a small bit of time. Photo Raw 2024, it's like the images are pre-cached in the actual software itself and it just pops them up straight away, which is really cool. A slight time saver, but in all honesty, I wouldn't upgrade software for that alone. But so far, I am noticing a massive difference performance-wise. So that, that's really cool. The browse feature, when you just open out a folder, it's like, boom, the images are cached. They're just there straight away. There's no waiting. They just all open out long and boom, you can start editing. Now the editing speed has also increased too as well, I found. The other thing I should mention too as well is if you are thinking about upgrading to On One Photo Raw 2024, then please do feel free to use my discount code. That will save you 20% on your upgrade. And if you're a new user, it works exactly the same way. So I'm gonna leave that in the description down below. The huge thing in this is Brilliance AI. This is what blew me away about Brilliance AI, right? What you can do is you can select all the photographs. I'm gonna show you in a second. You can select all the photographs. You can click on Brilliance AI. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna adjust the exposure it's going to adjust the color. It's going to adjust the color temperature. It's going to adjust the sharpness. It's going to adjust the highlights, the shadow details. And it's also going to add noise reduction automatically. But we're not finished yet. There's one other thing it can do is if it detects faces in the image, it's, if you can actually set it in the preferences to automatically to smoothen skin and things like that it'll do that automatically. So if you're batch editing, let's say 500 photographs from a wedding that you're at or something, it'll actually edit all those photographs. Now it's not gonna be perfect, but it has surprised me how good it is. It really and truly has. It has given me a fantastic base for editing my photographs. So what I did this week is I went out and I took photographs I normally wouldn't take. I said, look, I'm gonna go out on a Tuesday. I'm gonna take photographs of my favorite lighthouse. Take a few odd ones, a few different ones, challenging light, this sort of stuff. The conditions weren't brilliant, but a variety of images. And I said, what I'm gonna do is I could come back and I'm gonna try them then in On One Photo Raw 2024 and see how well it works. <laughs> if you're looking at this and say, oh God, harsh light, nice clear blue skies, Kieran. Why did you go out and take photographs on a day like that? Because it's Ireland. And because, look what's behind me. When you scroll down along, you can see the weather behind me just looks absolutely epic. And I was hoping that weather was going to come in. Right, I could get drowned wet, but we could get some lovely dramatic light, some amazing scenes. Now, unfortunately, it didn't come in. Spoiler alert. But there are still some nice photographs to edit here. And I'm going to show you how the batch editing and how Brilliant AI works. So, um, yeah, let's get back to it. I noticed when I was taking photographs of the landscapes, I noticed this black cormorant off to the side and I swapped out my lenses. I put on my 70 to 200, zoomed at a 200 mil and I got a few shots of this. And when I say I got a few shots, I got loads of photographs of this bird. You can actually, if I go back here along now again, you can see how many photographs I took with slightly different compositions. Now, if you're thinking, why did I take so many photographs of a bird like that? Purely because I'm not a wildlife photographer. <laughs> anyway, enough about that. Let's get back to it. I'm going to select them all with Control and A because I'm using a Windows PC. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Brilliance AI here now. And once I click on Brilliance AI, watch this, it pops down along. So I am no photo selected and I'm going to switch that on. And what that's now going to do is that is going to adjust every single photograph in this folder. And it's going to edit all of them. 
Yes, it's taking a small bit of time, but please remember, there's a massive amount of images in here, and these are 46 megapixel files it's editing. But look at that. Look at that run down through. That is flying through those photographs. Absolutely flying through the photographs. Scary, isn't it? Gonna see what happens here now. Are they nearly all edited? Never mind the bottom ones, the bottom ones. The bottom ones I'm using for something else. So we, we, we'll completely disregard these bottom photographs for now. But look, look at how much of a job that's after doing in those images. And again, that was all just completely automatic. That all just worked in brilliant AI just by switching it on and away it went. Now, as you can see, there's local adjustments and there's also options. So if I select options, Brilliance AI is selected on, white balance is on auto, no noise is on auto, and retouch large faces is switched off. Point with this is, if I switch this on, and if there was people in the photograph, it would automatically retouch the faces for you. No noise AI is on auto, so you can switch that on, off, or leave it on auto. What I would be inclined to do with no noise AI is, I would be inclined to leave it on auto because this is one of the really cool things about this software, that you can actually set in the preferences when you want no noise AI to kick in. So let's say if you're out shooting a wedding, you might be shooting indoors and you might be at ISO 3200, whereas when you're shooting outside, you could be shooting at ISO 64 or ISO 100 or ISO 200, depending on the lighting at the time. The ISO 64, 100 or 200, you don't need no noise AI to kick in on that. Whereas, if you're shooting at ISO 3200 or 6400, or heaven forbid higher than that if it's a really dark church, yes I've been there, especially if the priest does not want you to use flash, then you're going to be shooting at incredibly high ISOs. What you can actually do is, you can set your preference that, let's say your, your non-noise AI is only going to kick in above ISO 3200, or let's say ISO 3200 and above. Now, that all depends on how happy you are with the high ISO capabilities of your camera. So some people might say, look, ISO 800 for me, others might say 1600, otherwise other people might say ISO 6400. But you can set that for yourself, which is huge. And then, when you switch this on, it's going to look at the ISO that the photograph was taken at, and if it goes above your preset value, let's say ISO 3200 in my case, it's automatically going to apply no noise AI to clean out your image for you. Isn't that handy? And just think about the time saving involved in that. That is absolutely brilliant. Now, the other thing Brilliance AI automatically does is it applies masking. So yes, just by pressing that button, all those photographs are now masked. So there's, automatically, there's automatic masking after being applied to each image. I'm gonna show you here now. Here we have the photograph again. And as I say, this is the actual base photograph itself. Now this is what it looked like beforehand, and this is it with Brilliance AI. And that is completely automatic. I did nothing to that. That photograph has been edited from this, to that, batch editing it, and each individual photograph is adjusted for the best or the optimum results. Now, the real beauty of this is you might say, oh, Kieran, that's too strong, or it's not strong enough. Right, it's too strong. Fair enough. Dial back the slider here, and you can bring it back to nothing, or you can bring it back to, let's say, 100, which is roughly where it was, or you can increase it further again. Now, again, if you increase it too much, it's going to go a bit nuts, and that's understandable. But it was roughly around 100, wasn't it? Yeah, 100 there now. That is really, really cool that it will adjust it to that level automatically. Now, there is the fine tune option here, so you can adjust the tone amount and the color amount, so you can adjust them separately. Then we have our local adjustments. And now this is the really cool part because this is the automatic masking that's after being applied. We have background, foreground, animal, floor, natural ground, water. So if I go on animal, the general thinking being is I can click on animal and then I can adjust my sliders so I can just adjust the animal. So in other words, if I wanted to make that bird brighter or darker or change the, what you call it, um, color saturation, things like that, I can do that because the masking has been applied automatically. And that is a massive time saver. That has all been done completely automatically, which is absolutely criminal. Now, the keen-eyed among you might look at it and might say, 
Kieran, there's a few photographs there that just don't look right. So let's say if I'm looking at this photograph, that doesn't look like it's been edited. Whereas if I double click on it, open that out long, give it a couple of seconds, and once the preview updates, it is going to show me, yeah. So that has edited the photograph and I can just bring up my Brilliance AI slider and adjust it a bit more if I want. That is what the photograph looked like originally. And that is what the photograph is finished like. And you can see those edits are being applied instantaneously. So off and back on long again. So as I increase that slider, you can see that edit is being adjusted straight away. The other thing I have to address then is these photographs. So if you're looking at these photographs, these were all shot at different exposures because as you can quite clearly see, I was going to bracket these photographs together because the sun just seemed to be too intense. Now the one thing just to point out is if you're saying, oh, why is this photograph here, 1892, completely different to 1893? They're completely different because this is a TIFF file. This is a photograph that I've edited in another software application and I was thinking, look, this is what I want this photograph to look like. So that's what I wanted that photograph to look like, okay? Whereas this is actually the original file that has been edited in On One Photo Raw 2023 through Brilliance AI, and this was the end result I was going for. So if I go, that, that's probably a bit extreme too as well again, but if I go back to Brilliance AI, and if what I do is just grab that slider and increase that, and you can say, there we go. That's getting kind of close enough. Now, is it absolutely perfect? No, it's not. But anyone who's edited a photograph like that knows exactly how difficult it is to get a photograph looking like that. The dynamic range in that image is completely nuts. There was a lot of things applied to that photograph. I spent a small bit of time editing it. So getting, getting this as a base edit from that is really, really good. So this is the original unedited shot, and that is the Brilliance AI version. Now I can obviously go in and I can change to my local adjustments, the sky, the water, everything else, change the highlights, the tone amount, the color amount, and things like that. But as I say, this is the beta version, so it's not 100% working as of yet, so I don't wanna mess around with it too mightily much, but again, you can adjust all these separately afterwards. But again, as a base edit, that is just completely nuts. And something I did nothing to. I just selected all the photographs, did a batch edit, and this is what I got, which is completely crazy. I believe this is a massive step forward in batch processing. And this is something a lot of people are going to love because right, it might not give you the exact style you're looking for in a photograph, but it's gonna give you an incredibly good base edit. The masking is gonna be applied, so you can just go in and adjust each individual parameter to your own personal style, and bang, you have it. That's your photograph finished. Now again, thinking back to wedding photographers, wildlife photographers, people taking photographs in all different lighting conditions, that this is just gonna be a huge time saver. Yes, I'm gonna be doing a full proper review on On One Photo Raw 2024 once I get the final finished version in my hand. As I say, for now, this is just a beta version, but already the user interface is looking really cool. There's some nice changes. It just, it, it, it feels like a more advanced, sorry, it feels like a far more advanced copy of On One Photo Raw 2023. Yeah, just really looking forward to getting my hands on the final version. And um, thanks again, On One, and um, see you out there, everyone, and stay tuned for more.